same button to go forward. Whew. All right, let's get this party started. So my name's Ryan, I'm an engineer at Oak. Um, and today I'll be speaking with you about enabling event-driven execution with XCM, which is a bit of a mouthful, I know. So what are we actually gonna be talking about today? Well, first, I'll introduce you to Oak. Who are we? What do we do? Why should you care? Why should you even be excited about Oak? From there, we'll do a quick walkthrough of XCM, followed by how Oak uses XCM to unlock some, I'd argue, interesting things in Polkadot. And then last but certainly not least, we'll actually do a demo. You get to see this thing in action. So Oak, right? Oak is the dot sama hub for trustless automation. We're essentially um, an if this, then that parachain, right? So we're currently launching Kusama called Turing, and then we'll launch in Polkadot sometime in the fall called Oak. And we enable other parachains and smart contracts on those chains to schedule tasks to occur at some later time, right? Pretty simple concept. And while there are other automation plays in the blockchain space, most of those ultimately run on some centralized server, right? Which means either you're giving them your keys or you're giving them your tokens ahead of time. And I don't know about you, but we weren't fans of that, which is why we made Oak, so that all your automation logic, scheduling, execution, triggering, it all lives on chain. So how do we do that? Uh, there are three concepts I want to make sure you understand. The first is that we're non-custodial. Right? Once you sign that initial transaction, I don't need your keys, I don't need your tokens. We're good to go. So let's say, I don't know, you want to send someone money on the last Friday of every month at 4 p.m., right? You could schedule a transfer with Oak to do that. And once you sign the initial transaction, last Friday of the month rolls around, it's 4 p.m., we can just grab those tokens from your wallet and send them right over to that recipient, right? which is wonderful, we don't need those tokens ahead of time. Not a big deal if it's just one transfer, but if you're, I don't know, doing 12 easy payments of 9.95, it's kind of nice we don't collect it all up front. The second concept is when we know how to fire those events, when to execute, right? And we call it a trigger. Uh, trigger's pretty simple, it's made up of something we call a data stream price of ETH, temperature in New York City, time, right? Some piece of information that's constantly updating. And then a condition. The price of ETH is greater than $5,000. The temperature in New York City is 120 degrees. It's the last Friday of the month at 4 p.m., right? So now that we know when to execute, we need to do something. Uh, and we call those actions. And while Oak will have a number of actions on our chain that you could use, transferring assets, automatically restaking rewards. I'd argue the interesting ones happen when we use XEM to actually perform actions on other chains or smart contracts on those chains, right? This way you're not just limited to how creative and productive Oak is, but the entire Polkadot ecosystem, which is a much more exciting prospect. So this XEMP thing, Right, how do we use this? Well, XEM is a, just a version transaction format, right? Cross consensus message. Um, the way I like to think about it is it's, it's a really simple language that makes, it's made up of a list of instructions, right? They're all well-defined, it's some metadata that you can send between chains to get them to do stuff. And these instructions include things like withdrawing assets, depositing assets, paying for fees, teleporting assets. If you're getting the theme, it's anything you'd want to do with assets, there's probably an instruction for it, right? The other nice thing about XEM is that it is just a list of instructions, so there's nothing that inherently ties it to Polkadot. So if you had another chain somewhere else in the ecosystem that you wanted to communicate with and you have a bridge up there, you could also send them XEM messages. They could send them right back. Nice little standard you could use. Uh, lastly there is XEMP. XEMP is the mechanism that allows you to send messages between chains without needing a bridge. Faster, more secure. Um, it also allows you to communicate with the relay chain. Quick note there though, 
technically we are using XEMP light. This is called HRMP, horizontal relay message passing. All this means is if you want to send a message from your chain to another one, it goes up to the relay chain first and then down to your target chain. So things will take a little longer than it will at some point in the future. Now there's one instruction in XCM that gets me excited, but I am an engineer, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, that's the transact instruction. And all this allows you to do is call any extrinsic on a target chain, right? So you could say use this to schedule a task with Oak. The way it works is you uh, encode a call, right? So you basically write a little bit of code that tells the target chain, oh, for instance, I want to schedule a task with you that runs on the last Friday of every month at 4 p.m., right? Oh, it gets the transact instruction, decodes it, schedules away. But we can go further than that. And we can also say, all right, Oak, well, when I schedule that thing, when it goes off, can you send an XM message back to me or to another chain or another smart contract? And let's actually have that, have a transact instruction and run this encoded call, right? And whatever that is. So for example, we could say, hey, Oak, when the price of ETH is $5,000, I want to go swap ETH for AUSD on Swap. I'm cashing out, going on vacation, it's going to be great. It's just an example there. Now, of course, there are some, we'll call them tricky-ish parts on how to do this, which is what the example on the screen shows. So this would be code that would exist on a parachain that's calling into Oak. Uh, the first line there is that chain saying, all right, well, here's the encoded call for what I ultimately want to happen on my chain. Second line is using an Oak XEM crate, a simple crate we built that allows you to communicate with us a little more easily. And it's saying, hey, Oak crate, could you actually give me the transact instruction I need to schedule something with you? The third line is, once again, asking the Oak crate, could you just give me the whole instruction list? I don't really want to worry about having to pay for fees and stuff. So can you just give me that code for me? And then the fourth line is sending the message, which schedules a transaction. Right? So in four lines, we just scheduled something with Oak. I'll give it to you. It's a long four lines, but that's still pretty good. Well, if you're like me, you're thinking to yourself, OK, this is great, but how do the details work? Right? Unfortunately, those details are a little complex and pretty big topics. So I'm just going to introduce them today, and hopefully at some point in the future, uh, we can talk about those a bit more. The first one, dynamic fees. If you're at all familiar with XEM fees, you know that they're kind of tricky. And at the moment, they're just static. That means they don't care about how many Oak tokens is one dot or what the traffic is on that chain when using XEM. It's just a static fee in there. What happens when that changes? When we do care about the price of Oak to dot, when you want to schedule a task at 4 PM on a Friday, the last Friday of the month, and for some reason, that's a super popular spot. I don't know why, but it just is. And Oak then wants to charge a little bit more. How do you understand what to charge the end customer? What this is going to cost? Well, fortunately, in XEM v3, Parity does have a whole new bag of goodies that'll make this easier. Unfortunately, Oak's fees are more complicated than most. It's because we actually have to collect three fees. The first one is your standard inclusion fee. It's what you're all used to whenever you go and make a transaction, your normal gas fee. Your next ones will be called an execution fee, right? So you're scheduling something to occur in the future, which means that at some point, something's going to run in our block sometime down the road, and you have to pay for that wait, right? So execution. And the last one, an XEM fee. So if your final action actually occurs on some chain, Moonbeam, Akala, ASTAR, wherever you want, they also need you to pay a fee to be included in their block, right? So it gets a little more complicated a little more quickly. Second topic, handling failures. Once again, that last Friday of the month at 4 PM, super popular time, right? Let's say we can no longer support any more actions during that trigger. What do you do? When are you notified? How do you handle notification? What should the user do based on this information? Well, 
XCM does have some tooling to enable this, it's still gonna take a good amount of thought and a decent amount of code in order to handle those use cases appropriately. And then everyone's favorite topic, front running. Oof, we're talking about scheduling stuff in the future, right? So you could easily see how some nefarious individual could come into Oak, download the database, decode it, and then see who wants to do what and when, right? And they could definitely use the information to their advantage, potentially at the detriment of others. Unfortunately, with front running, there are a bunch of mitigation strategies we can use, but they're very use case specific. So if you want to do something with Oak that you think could be front run, please have a conversation with us and let's figure out the right way to mitigate that with you. Awesome. So but before we hit play on this, just a little quick background for this demo. Um, it is a recorded video because I do believe that doing live demos is super bold and I am not that bold. In order to do it, we're using this lovely UI, which is the polka.js UI, which has everything a growing developer needs, such as seeing blocks, scheduling extrinsics, and looking at events that are occurring on those chains. So if you could hit play for me. And we're good. So this demo is going to show a pretty simple action. We're just going to schedule a transfer, right? So moving tokens in the future. In order to do that, I have to run a local relay chain a local instance of our chain, and an example chain. Quick plug for the example chain, if you're a developer and you're trying to figure out how to integrate with us, this is a public repo that we maintain, uh, and it shows all sorts of example integrations. Any new feature we're going to try, we're going to use this chain to do it. So let's go to the Extrinsics tab and let's schedule this transfer. So I, Ferdy, want to send Alice some number of tokens in the future. So the thing you'll notice up there is there's a big old zero, right? That's just a handy little feature we built into our local environment that just tells Oak, just run this as soon as you can. I don't really feel like waiting a few minutes. But normally, you would put a Unix timestamp in there. Because when we schedule stuff, it is based on time and not some number of blocks delayed. Because Block time is variable. It's not very exact. So we're going to use time for that. And then if we flip over to where we can see events, look at that. The extrinsic worked. An XCM message was sent. Everything is going well. We go over to our oak chain. And XCM message received and tasks scheduled. And you can see it's scheduled for 1999, which is the para ID of that example chain. So at this point, we're waiting for the next block to start. Once it does, it'll say, all right, well, what time is it? And then what task should be triggered based on the time? Once again, since it's local development, it's just going to pick our task up immediately and execute it, which it just did. And we set an XCM message off back to that example parachain. Quick plug for the simple transfer task. While it is a basic piece of functionality, a scheduled transfer could be used to Set up your payroll, pay utilities, pay someone an allowance. There's all sorts of things, right? All of us are receiving and sending money on a schedule every single month. We come over back to our example parachain. And would you look at that? The tokens were transferred. I, Ferdy, sent a number of tokens to Alice. Then flip back to the slides for me. So next time.